In this video I'm going to show you how to use an iron-on transfer pen to transfer your designs onto your fabric for your embroidery projects. Hi everyone, Sarah and Ginger Cat today from Sarah Humphrey Embroidery. Welcome back to the channel. Just before we get going on today's video, I'd like to say some thank yous to everybody today actually who supports the channel. So for those of you who sit and watch me every week and tune in on a Friday when the videos go up and you leave comments below and you interact with our community and also to our channel members and our patrons as well um, for your support, um, which means I can buy some more equipment equipment and keep the equipment up to date and to those of you as well who click the super thanks button below the videos because you have enjoyed a video so thank you today to Patty, Joyce, Martha, Jenny, Caroline and another Caroline um, for doing that for clicking that button um, and showing me that you're enjoying the videos. So we have covered methods of how to transfer a design and put it onto the fabric for your embroidery before. We've got a video on five different ways to do that, so do check that out. Um, but um, I thought today we would just concentrate on one of those. We did touch on it in that video, but I thought we would look into it a little bit more detail and I'll actually show you the process and how to use these pens. So this is the iron-on transfer pen. This one is made by Hemline. We've got these in our shop, so I'll put a link to these in the description below this video if you're interested in using one of these. And it's basically, so it's got a blue ink in it, so we can't really use it on darker fabrics so much, but we'll get to that later on. Um, and you're going to draw the design onto a piece of tracing paper, and then we're going to iron the tracing paper onto your fabric. So I just want to show you what it says on the back first. So it's got a little bit of instructions on the back, but there's one really important thing that it doesn't tell you. So we... <laughs> We will talk about that because it is really important, actually. Um, but it just tells you you can draw your tr or trace your design onto the paper, place it face down onto the fabric, um, cover with a pressing cloth and iron it on there, basically. So one really important thing about it is it's a permanent mark. So if you've seen me before use my water erasable pens and we just put a bit of water on and it rubs off, this is the same colour, but it won't come off like that. So if you've got both pens, don't get them mixed up basically so it is permanent we will have to cover it and i will talk about that now i will actually demonstrate the pen in um, the full process of how to use the pen but i did have a little go with it first and try some different things with it and if you see my other videos you'll know what a fan i am of testing things and sampling things before you try them out and this one definitely do that it does even say that um on the pen <laughs> itself pre-test on the scrap fabric first um, because it will react differently on different fabrics so that is important to know but I've done a bit of testing for you so I'm just going to go through these samples that I've done and tell you what I've done with them so this was the first one that I did and I put it on a pretty hot iron and I just left the iron on then it came out quite nice and strong and I thought I'll just repeat it with the same pattern and see what happens and I kind of got two prints out of it but not the third um, this is the paper I drew the pattern on. So this is a little bit of tracing paper. Fairly heavy weight is best and it's useful to be able to see through it. I have tried it on normal paper and it does work, but this is much better. So if you can get some tracing paper to do it on, I recommend that. But you can, I don't know if you can see the design on there or not, you can just see a faint outline of him. The ink from the pen actually comes off on the fabric. So you know when you run out because you can't see it on your paper anymore. So that was three prints that I did there two, three, and then I ran out on the third one. So I did those quite hot and that used all the ink up. So then I did a little test to see how many I could realistically get out of one piece if I didn't do it for quite so long. So I did four seconds. I started at this end and four seconds. So a lot less time than that first one. And then each time I just held the iron on a little bit longer, a couple more seconds each time. And I managed to get four at five, not four, <laughs> can't count. Five prints out of this one. Show you the little, they've still got some ink left. So that's the actual ink from the pen still on the paper there. So I got five prints out of that. So this is a really great method if you wanted to make a lot of the same thing. If you were making some presents for somebody, if you're making up some kits or something like that, you can just repeat this and you haven't got to draw it each time. So that's what that one was. This one, I just thought I'd have a little practice about how long you need to leave the iron on. Now, the instructions, and we'll read this. It says, uh, press for up to 10 seconds. That's not terribly helpful. <laughs> up to 10 seconds. Is it two seconds or is it 10 seconds? So I thought I would just try that. So this one is 10 seconds. It's come out really strong, which is nice, nice and clear to see. But do you need it quite that strong? So then I tested five seconds and that still came out really nicely. 
you could definitely use that so you don't necessarily need it that strong so five seconds was good this is just on a standard cotton this is um uh, oh this is a cotton linen blend actually this one so a natural fabric and i will talk about synthetics um as well so you don't need it for 10 seconds on this fabric so it's worth just having a little bit of the fabric and a bit of tracing paper just try the pen and see how long you need to leave it on there for now Jonathan and I had a little play with this to see how fine a line you could get because it does say uh, medium tip on this one and I can't actually find one with a fine tip go on then a brick when he jumps off he's seen jonathan's lap so he's going to go and sit on jonathan's lap um where did i get so we tried the tip to see how fine a line we could get and you can't really see too well on the paper there but that was it when i ironed it so you can get a nice thick line and you can get quite a fine one if you turn the pen so it's straight down as well so you can get quite a fine mark and this is jonathan just practicing here <laughs> with a few with a few fine squiggles just to see how nice a mark he could get. So even though it's a medium tip, it does actually go quite fine. Okay, so I drew myself a, another design and I thought I'd try it on some different fabrics and some darker fabrics because it says for light fabrics, but I thought, well, let's just test it and see what it will work on. So I've drawn it on here. I'll explain the R as well. So the thing that it doesn't tell you on the packet that's the really important bit is you will have to reverse your design when you iron it you turn your paper over and you iron it down so the revert the design will come out the reverse of what it is on the paper so you need either need to reverse it first or i'll show you how you can deal with that on the tracing paper as well so i put a little r says right side so the ink from the pen is on the right side so when i iron it i will turn it over and i'll iron it on there and the R is the other way around, so I know that's the back. That's quite important because you can't always remember what side you put the pen ink on, and you'll end up with it on your iron if you're not careful. So that's why it's got a little R on it. So I thought I'll do these ones, and let's try on some different fabrics. So this is just a pure linen fabric, so it's come out quite nice, and they're quite pale as well, which is nice. Um, it's not too dark on that one so i thought we'll try a bit of a darker one so this is a bio washed washed cotton it's a nice soft cotton fabric and it's actually come out really well i thought let's try blue on purple and see how that comes up um, and it did come up really nicely on this one actually works really nicely on these natural fabrics so then i thought we'll have a go on some silk now the silk's really interesting because it does something quite weird on the silk so it has worked you can see it on there and I've just moved that pattern around a couple of times and made myself a bigger pattern so you can get several prints out of the same one if you do it carefully but what the silk does is <laughs> go straight through it and onto the fabric below so when you're ironing it and make sure you have a cloth underneath it doesn't matter if you get some of this ink on it because it just went straight through the silk and it's showing on the silk but it's also done a really nice pattern underneath so i don't know why that is so it does work on it but definitely definitely have something underneath if you're going to do it on the silk so then i thought we'll just try it on a bit of velvet now you can't see this i can just about see it from here it has worked but obviously it's it's not only is it velvet it's a dark colored velvet i don't think i'd really be able to stitch on that i think if i did it on a light velvet it would be fine but obviously you have to iron it on a quite hot heat and it has crushed the pile of the velvet down it squashed the pile so i would probably say don't do it on velvet um go and check out that video and there are other methods that you can use to transfer a design onto velvet prick and pounce is a really good one or the tack and trace trace and tack <laughs> and tack method um, for velvet so i would say no on a velvet then i thought we'd try some synthetic fabrics now i don't have loads i'm not really a fan of synthetic fabrics so much but it does work on them but it does the same thing as the silk it goes straight through that material and prints below it also prints on there so you can do it you can see it but again it does underneath as well so have something underneath when you iron it on that now this was another one, synthetic one that I thought I would try and you can't see it at all. There's a tiny little bit of a leaf here 
but it's not it just didn't work it's just not on there at all and I'm not too sure I'm guessing a sort of a polyester type fabric but again it appears below <laughs> so the designs magically gone through the fabric and appeared on the one below so it didn't work on that fabric but it did work on the backing one so you will definitely need to test it for the fabric you're thinking of using and I just thought I'd try a couple of fun ones I thought will it work on a canvas and it does I was really surprised it worked on the canvas um, not really dark but it's plenty to see with so you could use this on canvas if you wanted to needlepoint or canvas work it works on this and then I thought I'll try a bit of Ada as well a little bit of cross stitch fabric and what happened on this little bit here is it actually moved this is quite a stiff fabric and the tracing paper is obviously quite smooth and it slipped on it and you can sort of see how the lines have got a bit thicker and it's a bit sort of out of focus so I tried it again and I just went down with the iron and straight up and they came out much clearer this one I left the iron on a little bit longer so I've got a stronger colour and then I just um, copied um, just a single leaf on its own and made a little design up out of it so it's quite nice if you want to do a bit of repeating pattern and just move it and iron it again and move it and iron it again that was quite fun so it does work on a lot of materials these are just some of the ones I had that I've tried but like I said just get a little piece of yours you only need the very edge of it if you don't have a spare piece just do do it along the edge and do just try it out first to make sure you know that a it works on your fabric and b how long you have to leave the iron on there to get the marks that you want so i've made a little design that i'm going to demonstrate on and as usual i've made this into a little free pdf for you this will be on the free stuff page on the website the link to that is in the description below this video you can click on that and you can download that for free and we've got loads of designs on there now and they're all free for you to have a go at and to learn your embroidery with so we do hope you enjoy those this one will be on there too so the first thing we need to do is to get our design onto our tracing paper so that's my tracing paper there fairly thick one as I mentioned before now I'm just going to say again how important it is that um, you remember this that the design will be reversed when you iron it onto your fabric so I've done this little motif and I've done a word just to demonstrate this and we're going to do the little word so and a little motif underneath it now if I just draw straight onto that tracing paper with my iron on transfer pen when I iron it and I turn it over and iron it it's going to be back to front so what you can do and this is any design it doesn't have to be one with words in it if you've got some leaves and you want the particular way around then do this method as well so I'm going to draw it on with a pencil first we're going to trace through that and you can have a go as this with this design as I said or you can make up your own design as accurately as you can like so just lift it make sure it has gone through and then you can turn your paper over and we're going to put the actual pen on the back so that's the part that will iron onto the fabric now once this pen is down it's down you can't get it off and if it's on the paper and you iron it it will be on the fabric so just take your time with this do it really slowly practice on a spare bit first if you want to to um, make sure it's nice um, and neat and accurate and if you want a nice fine line use the pen more upright and you'll get the tip of the pen um, to make that nice fine line so I'm going to go really carefully and I'm going to move my paper around as I need to as well just to make sure I've got some nice movements very hard to draw towards you so go with the movement of your elbow so if you need to turn your paper to do a nice arc then turn your paper so I shall demonstrate that now so this is a nice arc through here it's going that way my elbow goes that way so I'm going to draw it that way finer line as you can and then just take each bit very slowly and carefully and as accurately as you can so there it is it's transferred onto the paper i'm happy with that if you did make a mistake you could just start again with another one or you could stick a little bit of paper over it if you don't want it to print um, so just go as carefully as you can with that bit and we're ready to iron onto the fabric so don't forget to cover your ironing board with a little bit of spare fabric just in case it goes through i'm going to do mine on a cotton fabric happy with that 
doing it on a nice light colour so you can see it clearly. And I'm going to put that in the middle, face down, so the ink from the pen, <laughs> that's the wrong way, the ink from the pen is on the back. So then I put the ink face down so my writing is the right way around, so don't forget to do that. That in the middle. Now I've got my iron on the hottest setting and I've just turned it down ever so slightly so it's on a cotton linen setting, just backed it off a touch and it's heated up. So I'm going to hold it in the corner. You can tape it down if you're worried about it moving. Don't mount the tape to your iron, <laughs> by the way. And I'm going to um, go for five seconds on this. So I'm going to two, three, four, five. You've got a large design, make sure you go to all the corners. And before I take it off, I'm just going to lift it up. If it's not quite come out right, you can put it back down and you can iron it again. I'm very happy that I can see that. I'm going to take that off and your paper will go a little bit wrinkly. You can see where you've ironed it, but there's more ink on there. I could do that again and probably get another um, print out of that. And if you want more prints, you can just go over the back again with your pen um, and keep printing it. So you can keep reusing this as many times as you like. So I've got my design on my fabric. I am going to get this framed up now and I'm going to do a little bit of stitching on it. This is really about how to use the pen, but there's a couple of things to say about covering up the line. So I'm going to get this framed up. I put a backing fabric behind it. Check out my video about backing fabric. So if you want to know what that's about and why I'm doing that, and then I'm going to fasten it to a stretcher bar frame. This one's had a few uses. So I'm going to stretch it nice and tightly on my frame, ready to stitch on. So it's in my frame held in versatile table clamp so I've got both hands free to stitch with and I've chosen my colour palette for this so these variegated threads look really lovely for lettering so I'm going to use this DMC one here if you want to know about variegated threads do check out that video um we've got videos on all the things that I'm going to do in this this project now um and then we've done those recently as well so if you click on my little channel logo and go to the home page of the um, channel you will see those up there already if you're interested in these materials and these techniques so I'm going to use that one and then I've pulled the colours that are from this to do the flowers with. So I've got a darker medium and a light. I'm going to do my flowers in, then I'm going to do my little leaves. So these are my flowers. Do my little leaves in these two colours as well. And because I like them, I could put some beads on at the end as well to add a little bit of sparkle. So let's get started with that. Now, as I mentioned, this pen is permanent. It doesn't come off, so you're going to need to cover the line. So you have to think about how many strands you use for this. Now, this is six strands here. So I'm going to use four of them, and we're just going to see what that looks like. And we can either put more strands in or make a different stitch if we want to cover it. So let's just try that first. So I've just got four in the like that together there. Put my knot in the end. And I'm going to start here and this little tight turn here. So I've got waist knot on the top, two small stitches. Really nice way to start your thread if you've not seen that before. I just don't really like all those knots on the back, they're a bit more secure. I'm going to start at the end. I'm just going to start with a stem stitch. And let's see how that line covers. So we need to make sure we cover it because we can't get it off. So that's a little overlapping stitch, nice and tight together because it's on the curve. And a little tip for you, if you want to cover something up um, if you do a slightly looser tension don't pull it so tight more of the thread sits on the top of the fabric and it'll spread out a little bit more and should cover your line so that is covering quite well with four i don't often use six strands it can be a bit bulky but if you need to go to six you can go to six you can go to more than six if you want to so that is covering reasonably nicely. If your lines come out a little bit thick, you could try a different stitch. So let's just go into a little bit of a chain stitch. 
So you can either make your threads thicker or you can do a stitch that comes out thicker. So I'm going to go straight into a chain. Stem stitch into chain stitch looks really lovely in letters and you can sort of make it a feature of the letter. So we'll just thicken that bit up with some chain stitch. And you can see how much thicker that stitch is. That's covering that line really well. So you can do two things. You can use more thread or you can use a thicker stitch. Or you can use a mixture like I'm doing if you want to. So just nice and slowly make sure you cover up your line and it doesn't smudge. It doesn't come off on your fingers. So it's a really nice clear design for you to work on. So what I'm going to do is finish stitching this. I'm going to do the rest of it in the same stitch. I'm going to go around all of this in a mixture of the stem and the chain. So I shall come down here, maybe a bit of chain around here and back up in the stem around here. And I'll do the E and the W. And I'll do the same for this little row here. I was going to stop there and do that bit there. And I'm going to work this in the woven roses we've got a couple of videos on woven roses in those ones that i did recently if you want to do them in silk ribbon we've got a video on that as well that went up recently and i'm going to put some little silk ribbon leaves on it so i'm going to do that now just putting in the last few little beads now got the double ordinary sewing cotton just to put these down with we've got videos on how to apply beads to your projects including how to put some beads in stitches that was quite a fun one so last one going in now and then i'm going to call that done i think i shall finish that off on the back so as i said just make sure you cover those lines because they don't come off i found the four strands covered fine actually and the sit um, and went up to the larger stitch you can use any thread you like you don't have to use stranded cottons you can use perlays if you want to use a th thicker thread so i hope you found that interesting um, and useful and how to use an iron on transfer pan so don't forget that we've got the design if you want to have a go at this and i'm just going to show you the little sampler that i made as well before so what we do is sample just to check things out and see what threads and colours you like. So I did this one in a different colour set. This was another variegated thread. So this was a nice purple green one on a slightly darker fabric just so you can see how else you can do that and another colour set that you can do that. And um, that's it for this video, folks. So thank you very much for, much for watching. If you want to see some different um, ways to transfer a design onto your fabric, do check out this video up here. That will give you five different ways. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and I will see you all next time.